Hello, and welcome to this film, which is about redox calculations. It's the first of a few films about redox calculations, um, but we're starting simple, and we're starting off by using the knowledge that we've got about balancing redox equations using half equations. Uh, we're going to combine half equations to get a mole ratio from our balanced redox equation so that we can do some stoichio stoichiometry problems. Okay, And there's actually two of these problems in this film. Now, before we get started, Try and make sure you've got your data sheet handy when you're doing these sort of problems. It's not really essential for this film because I'll be putting up the half equations that you need for this. But nine times out of ten, you'll be able to do a redox problem using the half equations from your data sheet. If you can't, because the, the half equation isn't there, then you'll have been given enough information about the reactants and products to write your own half equation as we've seen before. Okay, But it's definitely useful to have your data sheet with you when you're doing these kinds of problems. Okay, first question says, how many moles of the following, so that's Br- minus and Fe2+, plus, will be oxidized by 10 milliliters of 0.01 mole per liter potassium dichromate in acidic solution? Now, uh, just before we start this problem, dichromate doesn't have to be potassium dichromate, it could be sodium dichromate, that's a really common oxidizing agent. This is the half equation of the data sheet that involves dichromate. And sometimes people get thrown by these uh, the wording of these questions and they wonder what the hell the acid's got to do with anything. Okay, um, what you can see in this half equation here that if I don't have H plus ions, this reaction can't happen. So I have to have acid around and you'll see that in many questions you'll talk, they'll be talking about acidified dichromate because it won't act as an oxidizing agent unless it's got acid around. And dichromate always gains electrons like any good oxidizing agent, I suppose. Um, so we're going to be looking for things that are losing electrons when they react with it. Okay, let's start off by looking at the bromide question. Now, if I look up on my data sheet um, half equations that have bromide in, I'm only going to find this one. Okay. Now we've looked before at how we put two half equations together. We first look at the number of electrons. Okay, so we can see we've got two and six there. So to make the number of electrons the same because we've been through this before, I'm going to go through it quite quickly this time. We're going to multiply this whole equation by 3, and that's going to give me 6 bromide ions. All right, I'm not really interested in the other things at the moment, because I'm trying to compare the number of moles of this to the number of moles of dichromate. So if I write myself a little expression saying that the number of moles of bromide is related to the number of moles of dichromate, then really all I need to do to solve this particular question is to find the number of moles of dichromate and put the right factor in here. Okay, so um, first of all let's look at what number to put in this expression. Well the number of moles of bromide ions is 6, the number of moles of dichromate ions is 1, so the number of moles of bromide is 6 times as great as the number of moles of dichromate. And what's the number of moles of dichromate? Well the number of moles is C times V, which is 0 0.01 times 0 0.01, and that's 0 0.0001 moles. So in other words, the number of moles of bromide ions that I can oxidize um, using this amount of dichromate is 0 0.0006 moles. Okay. Now moving on to the other question. This one's a little bit trickier because there's actually two half equations on your data sheet that involve iron 2. Now how do you choose between them? Well, you choose the one where iron 2 is losing the electrons that the dichromate is gaining. Okay, and This one shows iron 2 gaining electrons to become iron. Sorry, I didn't have an equilibrium arrow to put in on, on Keynote. Couldn't find that, so I put in this one-way arrow, which shouldn't have, really. But anyway, um, and this equation shows you iron 2 losing electrons to become iron 3. Okay, So in other words, that half equation is a poor choice because iron 2 is gaining electrons. But this one's a good choice because it's losing them. Okay, and I've got one electron in this half equation. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to multiply this equation by 6 to give me those 6 electrons. And once again, you can see that there's 6 of these ions to react with 1 mole of the dichromate ions. So the number of moles of Fe2+, plus, rather like it was with the bromide, is equal to six times the number of moles of Cr2 O7 2 minus. Okay, which isn't any different to what it was before. It's 0 0.006 moles. Okay, so that's how we find the mole ratios. Let's have a quick look at a problem where we use these mole ratios 
and then that'll be it for this particular film. So here we are, here's the next problem. What mass of iron 2 ammonium sulfate hexahydrate, what a mouthful, all right, we'll talk about that in just a minute, would be needed to standardize 20 mils of approximately 0.02 mole per litre potassium permanganate. Okay, first of all, uh, this iron 2 ammonium sulfate hexahydrate, we're going to need to know its formula for this question. Okay, that is Fe and then two ammonium ions and two sulfate ions. Okay, that's its formula. Okay, um, that's going to be important when we're trying to find its mass. But when we're doing redox with this substance, it's just acting as a source of iron 2 plus ions. Okay, so we can forget about all this other stuff and we can just look for a half equation that has iron 2 plus in it. Potassium manganate, really commonly used oxidizing agent, so or potassium permanganate. This is the permanganate ion and it's purple. Really commonly used half equation. So probably by the time you finish doing redox, you'll actually remember it. But it's there on your data sheet. Okay. So we are using permanganate, which is an oxidizing agent. It gains electrons. So again, I've ruled out the other iron 2 plus equation. I've gone for this one because iron 2 plus is losing electrons. Okay. So this iron 2 ammonium sulfate is our source of iron 2. The mass of it, the mass of um, iron 2 ammonium sulfate, so the mass of that, this whole formula is a bit of a bore to write it all out, but let's do things properly. Okay, the mass of that is equal to the number of moles times big M. Now I'm going to save you the trouble of finding big M and tell you that it's 392.15. Now, how do I find the number of moles of this? Well, this is the same as the number of moles of iron, right? So the number of moles of iron, 2 plus, which is in here, I'm going to relate that to the number of moles of something else. In this case, I'm going to relate it to the number of moles of permanganate ions. Okay? Is this expression true? Well, let's have a look at the half equations. I've got one electron there and five there. So no, that expression certainly isn't true. I've got to multiply this equation by five, which means that the number of moles of iron two is five times greater than the number of moles of manganate ions. Okay, so in other words, I can find the number of moles of iron 2 and therefore the number of moles of iron 2 ammonium sulfate by finding the number of moles of permanganate ions. How do I find the number of moles of permanganate ions? Well, the number of moles of permanganate is simply C times V, which is 0.02 multiplied by 0.02, and that's equal to 0 0.0004 moles. Okay, so I've got 0 0.004 moles of permanganate ions. I multiply that by 5, so I'm using this number here. Multiply it by 5 and I get 0 0.002 moles. And then I multiply 0 0.002 moles by the molar mass, that's 392.15, and that is 0 0.784 grams. Okay, so that's how many mole, uh, sorry, how many grams of iron 2 ammonium sulfate I have to use in order to react exactly with 20 milliliters of 0.02 mole per liter of potassium permanganate. Okay, so that's the first film about redox calculations. It's deliberately uh, aimed at a slightly lower level than you can expect to see in your exams um, because we're just introducing the idea of getting mole ratios from balanced uh, overall equations. Uh, the next film deals with some titration calculations, so that might be a good place to go next. But if you've had any problems with this one, please leave a comment or come and ask me some questions so that you can move on and start attempting some more difficult problems.